Hi there, I'm Michael Odie. I'm a SolarWinds contributor and president of Tech Inc. And in this video, we're going to look at scheduling SQL Server jobs using SQL Agent. So what are we going to cover? Well, first we're going to look at the different components that make up SQL Agent. Next, we're going to look at starting the SQL Agent service using SQL Server Configuration Manager, although you can also start it using Windows Services, but since it's a SQL component, we'll use the Configuration Manager. Next, we'll look at actually creating SQL Agent jobs. We'll look inside the SQL Agent job, we'll look at creating job steps. Job steps basically contain the actionable items that the agent jobs will perform. They're basically the executables that are going to happen. They could be scripts, they could be T-SQL scripts, PowerShell scripts, they could be SISS packages, they could be a number of different things. And then, after we've created those job steps, we'll look at setting up a job schedule so the job could run at a recurring basis at uh, pretty much whatever interval we want to set it at. So what does a SQL agent jobs consist of? Well, first, there's the job itself, and the SQL agent job is basically uh, a specified action, or it can be a series of actions. You can have multiple job steps within a single job that the SQL agent will execute. Those job steps, you can set up uh, dependencies upon the different steps to where if a preceding step fails you can cancel the job or you could continue on to the next step. I'll cover more about that when we go through a quick demo of it in just a second. Uh, SQL agent com jobs also consist of schedules. Basically the schedule defines when that job will run. Multiple jobs can all run on the same schedule. You don't have to have them set up at different times or anything. Jobs can also be run uh, in response to alerts. Basically, a SQL agent alert is an automatic response to some sort of system event. So you could kick off your jobs in response to an event. For instance, if the CPU agent goes idle, you can run a job then when the system is, uh, is quiet. And then there's also operators. Uh, SQL agent jobs have operators, and an operator is basically um, somebody who's responsible for the maintenance of your SQL Server instance. You're going to pretty much notify that operator, say on the success or failure of a job, or uh, you could send them an email or a fax, or you could send them a, a net send type of message. Anyway, these are the different SQL agent components. When you get ready to start SQL Agent, uh, you can do it in a couple different ways, but SQL Server Configuration Manager is the most straightforward way. Basically, open up Configuration Manager. You'll see the SQL Server Agent listed in the Configuration Manager. Uh, by default, it is not started automatically. It's in a manual mode, like you see here. Uh, to start it, simply right-click on it and select Start from the, from the Context menu. If you want to go ahead and set it up to Automatic, which most SQL Server shops would want to do, double-click on it, go into the Properties, and uh, change the Start Mode. I'll show you how to do that uh, live in just a second here. Once the agent is started, you can create new jobs by using SQL Server Management Studio. Basically, go down and open the, the SQL Server Agent node, right-click on it, and you'll go step through a, a new job wizard like you see here. And with a job, basically the first thing is to set up a job name, and then you're going to go into the Steps tab, which you can see here onto the right side of the screen, and you'll define some agents or some actions that this, uh, this job step is going to take. For instance, on this screen, you can see that we're performing a backup database command for the AdventureWorks database. So that's a T-SQL command. We could have also run a number of different things like a PowerShell script or a, a command shell script, or we could have launched uh, one of the replication actions, or we could have launched a SQL Server Integration Services package. We could have done a lot of different uh, actions here. But in this case, it's a T-SQL command, and you can see we can have multiple job steps uh, within a given job. Once you've set up those job steps, the next thing is to go ahead and set up a schedule. And uh, schedule is one of the uh, next pages that you could see on your new job uh, wizard, your new job dialog. And when you set up that schedule, you can see here that you give the schedule a name. You can set the schedule type as once only, as recurring, in response to an event, but in this case it's going to be a recurring schedule. You set up the frequency of that schedule, how often it's going to run, uh, once a week, daily, uh, whatever, then you set up whatever time it's going to run, and basically uh, once you've set up a schedule, then the SQL agent will automatically launch your jobs in response to that schedule. 
So that's kind of a quick overview of the SQL agent. Let's go in and have a, a look hands-on and, and see about creating an actual job. So to get started working with SQL agent jobs, we first need to make sure that that SQL agent is running. And we can do that with SQL Server Configuration Manager like you see here. Uh, here you see SQL uh, Server Agent is running. When to start and stop it, we can right click and use the context menu. If we want to con configure it, we can double click it and we can change the account that it logs on with. We can also change the start mode. It, right now it's set up manual. We could set it to automatic to cause it to start uh, whenever um, SQL Agent and the system starts. And on the advanced tab, we can turn on and off error reporting and customer feedback. But that service tab in the start mode is probably uh, the most important thing you'd want to change here. And in this case, you would probably do want SQL Agent to run automatically whenever the system starts. Once SQL Server Agent is running, you can work with it by using uh, SQL Server Management Studio and you'll see a SQL Server Agent node. If the agent service is active, there'll be a little green arrow here on the node. If you expand it, you can look at the jobs that are there. This is a set of default jobs that come with SQL Server. If we want to go ahead and create a new job, we'd right click on the job node. We'd say new job. This will open up uh, the new job dialog. We'll give it a name and we'll call it my job and we can give it a description and we'll say this is an example job and that's probably good and then the important part is to set up the job steps for the job and the job steps are basically the actions that are going to be performed uh, initially there won't be any so it'll be blank and here we'll set up um, the first step and this will be a the uh, we used a database backup so let's go call it database backup giving it a step name. This is going to be a T-SQL command. We're going to go ahead and run it under this current context and we'll say backup database adventure works 2012. That's the database that I have out there. If we wanted to say open a set of SQL commands we could use the open button to do that and it would open a SQL file we could copy and paste we could parse the command using this button to make sure that the command uh, is valid and the syntax is good and over on the advanced tab we might have multiple job steps and if we did we might want to control what happens after a successful action or after a failure action so after a successful one we could quit and report it as a success quit it as reported as failure or most likely you'd want to go ahead and go on to the next step Likewise, on a failure, you'd probably want to quit and report it as a failure, but you could also go on to the next step or even report it as a success if you wanted to. So once you set up your job steps, you basically have created the actions that you want this job to perform. And as you can see here, we can have multiple job steps in this case. This job is a simple one with only one, but we could have multiples. And next, we are going to go ahead and create a schedule for it. And likewise, at first, there are no schedules, so we'll go ahead and create one. And we'll call this one My Schedule. And for schedule types, we could have it as recurring, or we could have it whenever SQL Agent starts, whenever the CPU becomes active, or as a one time job. Pretty much for regular jobs, you'll want to set it to be a recurring type of job. Then you'll set up the frequency is it going to be weekly, daily, monthly? If it's going to be daily, when is it going to recur on? In this case, it's set up to run weekly on Sundays. What time is it going to run? And is there a, du a duration for the job? So that pretty much has created the schedule. So now we have created a new job. And that job is pretty much ready to run. And you can see it down here. And if we wanted to control that job, we could start it at a given job step. We could look at its history. Well, since it's just created right now, it's not going to have any history. But if we were, if it, we would run it, that's be where we would see that. And if we want to look at the different job statuses that are out there, we could open up the job activity monitor and you could see the status of some of the jobs that have run. And that's the end of this presentation about creating SQL agent jobs and scheduling them. Thank you for watching.